Hi, this is Marcel of Marcel on Tech, and today I wanted to talk about the many amazing and impressive things that this device can do. This is the Google Pixel 8 Pro that has got some incredible AI integrations that I've been loving. So I really want to show you some of the things that this thing can do that's very, very special and whether you should consider getting one for yourself and why this might be useful for you. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so let's have a little look at the smarts for the Google 8 Pro, which I'm rocking here. I've been really enjoying this device. Have to say, it, it, by far the best Google product that they've created uh, in a very long time, and I think it's definitely the best Google Pixel they've created in a very long time. So what I wanted to show you was the functionality of Read Aloud, which is really, really handy. You just go to uh, the function here, and then you say the magic word. And what will happen is it will open out here and you can ask it to read aloud. And it will read whatever web page that you're looking at out loud. The team has tried to follow similar tactics in court, as well as denying wrongdoing and defending. So that is uh, talking about the Trump case, which is quite amusing, but also very sad. But it can read aloud if you can't be bothered to read it yourself. It is a super duper handy function uh, that's built straight into the keyword, as you all know, in order to activate that. Or you can, of course, double press the power button, which is a shortcut on this device as well. Now, AI wallpapers. If you watch my review video of this device, you will see that wallpapers, which can be quickly accessed by pressing and holding on the background wallpaper, have been mastered by this device. If you go to settings and wallpapers or more wallpapers here, you've got these two fantastic little functions. You've got AI wallpapers. Now, it is really, really detailed as to what you can do. You can effectively create an X-ray image, let's say of, in this case, bees wings. It will give you suggestions, which just makes it that little bit easier to choose what it is that you're going to have a shot of. Let's say forget-me-nots and you choose your color. In this case, let's say yellow. You create that, and in no time at all, it is creating you a unique wallpaper using AI that no one else will have. And it gives you four options to choose from. First one's not so good. These are much nicer. If you want to change that up, you can select from the top here, and you've got all these options available to you as well. If you want a certain terrain, you want surreal cliffs or realistic in, let's say, blue. Create the wallpaper. And there we go. It's produced very quickly. Some unique, really very cool. Actually, I love those. Those look very, very cool. Uh, photorealistic wallpapers and they're absolutely brilliant. So you've got lots and lots of choices to play around with. Whatever you've created gets saved in the bottom there. And it is really, really good and fun and very easy to use. Of course, you've always got the standard uh, Google Photos, which, of course, I really love the uh, Living Universe versions as well, which have moving elements. The moon is fantastic as it rotates. I'm using the Earth version right now. It actually rotates as you look at it very, very slowly. And it's also showing exactly the position of the sun relation to where I am in the world. So very cool. I really like the wallpapers. They've just taken it up a whole nother level with the integration of the AI. And then they also have emoji, which can be quite good fun. Again, it will make randomized images using your favorite emojis. You can choose on the size that you might want. You can choose the coloring, all sorts of things. This isn't really for me, but there might be someone that you know that absolutely loves it. And that's very, very clever to make your favorite emoji wallpapers. Okay, if we go into the camera here, the camera will actually auto select which lens and how much resolution you're allowed on this device. But on the pro version, which this one is, you actually have a pro setting here, which allows you to, to set as default the 50 megapixel resolution, which is what all of the lenses are. Otherwise, it will be a 12 megapixel, which isn't by all means bad at all. But if you want a little bit more detail, then the 50 meg is always going to give you more detail, more information, and more editable um, images after you've taken the image. So you can set that as the default. And of course, you can also set that it's either JPEG 
or in RAW. If you know anything about RAW, it literally explains to you what RAW will do. And if you want to have a bit more fun, a bit more variability with your photography, you can do that as well. It's very, very cool. I'm going to keep it on JPEG. And then uh, lens selection. You can actually select which lens because it will auto switch depending on what it thinks is the best lens. But you can also make it manual so that you can do that yourself. You've got your ultra wide and so on there. You can see how it allows me to control on a granular level. Okay, very, very cool. Okay, if we open up Google Photos, you will see that there is an awful lot of things that we can do inside here, particularly in relation to editing. So the AI smarts inside of this, inside of Google Photos is unreal and very, very cool. So this photo has actually already been edited. If you can see, if you look over to the right side, you will see that there are shadows for things that are no longer in their place. So the sun is clearly over here, but I have removed whatever it was that was here. Let me see if I can find the original image. There we are. The original image has these sun blinds or umbrellas in that position and I removed them all from that photo. Now looking at that photo, you wouldn't necessarily know that they were there other than the shadows which I left on purpose. So it's very, very clever and lots of editing can be done. How do we do that? Well, we hit the edit button and we've got a couple of options here. Of course, we've got the magic eraser. So what it will do is analyze the image and I can then select whatever part of the image that I want. Now, one of the downsides to this is that it's a little on the slow side because it has to be uploaded and it has to connect to their servers, but it will automatically select that I can delete all the people in the image, which is quite amusing, but that's not something that I want to do. So if I want to boost the image, if I want to make it more dynamic, then I can do that with these quick buttons here, which is available on most of the Google devices. But I can boost the colors and enhance certain things, make it more vivid. I like the dynamic button that really lifts up a lot of the, uh, the saturation, which I quite like. But the key to this device is this little button down here. And this is the AI Smarts. So what it will do is analyze the image and I can tap on a certain area. So let's say I want to change something and I want to erase the sky, then I can change the outlook of the sky and the AI will assess how best to make those changes. So what it's done there is it's actually added, there we go, you can see just how different it's made the background completely. So it's added new trees, removed the buildings, added lots of trees in the background, removed, in fact, integrated an entirely new building in the background. It's very, very clever. And it almost changes the complete structure of the image in that it almost makes it unrecognizable from the first one. So it's very, very clever. And it just gives you lots of variables to make a unique image. So this really is very, very cool and built right into the Google Photos app. So let's have a little look now at uh, the video editing suite. And this is very, very cool. Let's say you have a video that has audio included, but it's a bit windy or there's, there's a lot of uh, interference in the way. What you can do is go to the audio and the audio eraser will reduce distracting sounds like wind and crowds to isolate certain parts. So it's identifying the sound itself. And now I can isolate music, speech, noise, wind, etc. So if we isolate the music, so the music is much louder. If we get rid of any wind noise or focus on it, there. So it is very, very cool. Uh, isolating each aspect of the audio from within a video and therefore allows you to push up if for example you're in a windy environment and you're talking to the camera it will allow you to push up the audio quality which is very cool very very useful to be honest uh, and that is a great function built into the google app on the google pixel 8 pro okay let's talk about scheduled messaging now this might not seem like the best 
most exciting feature. However, it is something that I think is really, really helpful. So let's say I want plan to send my lovely wife a message and I want to schedule it to go just as I'm about to leave work, for example, or I want her to know something I'm feeling, uh, then it's going to be very easy for me to do where I can tap the plus button and hit schedule. And it will give me some auto selections here. So tomorrow at eight, tomorrow at one, or I can create a custom time that I can have it go out tomorrow at midday. Those are the selected times, press save, and that text message will be sent out at a time that I select. I think that's a brilliant option to have. We know that we can now do that on emails, and they've finally integrated that into the messaging app as well for your average text messages. Very, very useful, and not many people know about it. Now, in Finale, this device has actually got face unlock as well as the fantastic under the screen fingerprint reader, which I find has been really reliable for me and I really, really like it. But one of the things I've been really impressed with is the face reader as well. And it has been extremely good at picking up my face and unlocking really, really well. Now you can actually program it so that as soon as you pick up the device and it detects your face, it will actually, you see how it's unlocked there for me? I've kept it so that it stays on the lock screen, but you can set it so that you don't even have to swipe up. It will immediately get you into your screen. And that's something you can set in your security features. But I've set it so that it will unlock the device, but I still do the unlock. Now, this is happening because the 10.5 MP camera is actually combined with AI technology for facial recognition. So it is more secure than your regular facial recognition system and is very, very fast as well. I've been really impressed with how this picks it up. It doesn't always work at night necessarily but because of course it does need a little bit of light. It's not infrared based like the iPhones are for example, but this does work really, really well. And even when it's sometimes off center, there we go, it's picked up my face. So it's not even looking directly at me, but it's picked up using AI, it's able to search for my face and has done that really, really quickly and effectively. And I've been really enjoying that as well. Okay, so that was my video on the Google Pixel 8 Pro and the AI integrations and just how powerful a device this is. There's a little bit way to go. The one thing missing is that the video boost function for AI is not yet integrated into this, but it's coming along very, very soon. Um, I believe it's going to be available in the early part of next year, where there's going to be even more editability, particularly with the actual images of your video. Uh, but the audio, as you saw from the video, is a really cool feature, being able to isolate different things. But if you've got your favorite feature, please put a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. And uh, I would very much like for you to like and subscribe as well. That really helps out the channel. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you very, very soon in the next video. Bye-bye for now.